is there she is much love much love to you all right gonna go ahead and invite her bring her in yeah. all right <laughs> hey, i'm here i don't know what, how to navigate this thing i haven't done this before thank you so much thank you for navigating the technology <laughs> for us thank you thank you so much this is kind of new to me so thanks for bearing with me how are you jerome Oh, I'm doing wonderfully well. Thank you for asking. You know, it's a it's a whole new world sometimes. It's like you're navigating, you're maneuvering. You're, <laughs> I'm like, I'm clicking on your photo. I don't know what to do now. So, But thank you so much for bearing with me. Yeah. Of course. You know, I'm honored to have you in here. I was just bragging on you. You're one of my mentors that I deeply respect. And I really feel like this is a special time right now. And I just want to thank you for coming on and speaking with us. And sharing your journey. Thank you so much, Jerome. It's been, it's, 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 I'm so honored to be here. So thank you so much for inviting me. I appreciate that. Thank you. Of course. So how was your happy new year? How did you open it up? Oh my God. I wrote down a bunch of things that I, that, that um, are going to be manifesting for me in the new year. So I wrote it down in the, you know, present tense that is already manifested for me. So I, I find that every time I do that, when I look back, all those things have already manifested. So it's amazing. So I'm just like writing things down because when I look back at things that I have written down in the past, they all come, you know, to pass. So I'm like, okay, that's great. So yeah. Wow. But, yeah, wow. yeah. What about you? How you've you always you've always been like a powerful manifester in my eyes, like making things happen, you know, on your travels, on your journeys. You're the one that taught me that the universe has your back, right? Yes, the universe has your back. You just follow your highest joy and the universe will have your back, yeah. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. that's what I'm doing with my path. I'm following my highest joy. That's what I'm doing with this retreat. That This is so exhilarating for me to put on this retreat. It's, it's mm -hmm. almost like it's, it's a way for me to give back. Um, it's, mm -hmm. it's, it's been so exciting. So I'm so excited about this retreat. Uh, so it's one of the things that I've wanted to do. And so, yeah, it's, it's here. It's happening in February. In it's here. It's here. It's here. Yeah. It is upon us. Yes, you know? yes. Rocky, do you feel like, you know, when I listen to you speak, you do have this supercharged energy that you put into everything that you say, the words that you speak when you're sharing your truth on your platforms, on your YouTube channel. You put a lot of emotion into things and, and your feelings. Do you feel like that kind of goes hand in hand with the manifestations? Absolutely. Good point, Jerome. Yes. Because they say you when you when you amplify your emotions, it it, it, it amp actually when you increase your emotions in your heart, it amplifies your manifestation, right? So absolutely good point. Yes. Yeah. yeah. It's I just re you remind me, I recall I think it was Neville Goddard. Or something, <clears throat> something I read from Neville Goddard, and it said something like, "The feeling is the secret." You know. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes, yes. It's one thing to write it down and say, that, you know, in the present tense, but the the to amplify it is to feel it in the heart and as if it's already like has happened. So mm -hmm. yeah, and I guess when you're saying that, I, because I'm following my highest joy, I guess that's why you're you're seeing the mm -hmm. the energy because this is something that's of of, of of a great passion to me and to, to give back. I mean, I think this retreat is, is, a, is a way for me to kind of give back. So much that I have learned along this path that this is kind of, I've, I've been part of so many retreats. I've been a part of putting on so many retreats. So I feel like I've learned so much and I feel like this is kind of, I kind of figured out what maybe people need to kind of sustain themselves on this path. So I'm bringing both the breatharian path and the spiritual path together. And I think that is more sustainable. So my friend Veronica, and I are going to be putting it on together. So we're so super excited. Mm -hmm. We're putting our heart and soul into this project. Um, mm -hmm. And it's not just going to be Costa Rica. We're going to be doing it throughout the process as well later on. Yeah. Wow. How exciting is that? You know, combining your forces, you know, bringing it together, the spiritual aspects and, and every other aspect. And it's like Wonder Twin Powers activate. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. I used to watch it as a kid. It's like, it's totally activated. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I totally agree with you. Yes. It is, and you know what? It has been, it's been so much work, but we don't think of it as work because we're so passionate about it. It time just goes by and, and we're just getting so much work done. It has been amazing, actually. It's been fascinating to try to put this uh, retreat together and we're learning so much. It's, it's, it's great. Yeah.
So thank you so much for, for having me here. Yeah. Of course. What's been the most, um, I guess, challenging <laughs> aspects of putting this together? Because this is the first, I guess, official retreat that you've put together, right? Ah, uh, yeah. I guess get the word out. I think that's one of the things. There's no traditional kind of advertising where you can kind of do it because this is such a niche market, you know what I'm saying? So it's to get the word out. Um, I think that's has been one of the, the challenging things. But I think it'll just get easier after after a while. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And Rocky, you know, earlier you talked about following your highest joy. And it's kind of like when we follow our bliss, um, do you feel like this is kind of one of the things that what you referenced to about amplifying that heart frequency, something that, that makes it more, that opens you up or makes it stronger? Yeah, yeah, absolutely, yeah. Because you may want to manifest something, but if that heart is not into it, if you're not feeling it, if you're not the vibration of what it is that you want to manifest, and you're not going to manifest it, right? So you're going to have to be that vibration, like as if you already have it. And in your heart, you know, you, you kind of, walk it as you have it you're gonna you're gonna you your whole body emanates it that you already have it so then you already have it right you go into that parallel like dimension and you already have it then you already have it it's already done <laughs> it's, it's already, already done. yours yeah yeah yeah, yeah I, I remember listening to and i know you've met ellie tom you know? yes yes and ellie tom Elamine, he would say the more the electricity the more the magnetism you know so it's like when you increase that, that electricity, that frequency, that heart, you know, the power of the heart, which they say is like several times more than, than the, the brain, you know, at that amplifying that, that it magnetizes things towards you. Right. And, and you just become the vibrate, the frequency of that, because you are vibrating at that level. So you have nothing but those kinds of things coming to you. Mm -hmm. So it's, it becomes magical after a while. It just becomes... This whole retreat, putting me putting on this retreat, has been, it's been magical. I just like, oh my god, this has been a magical experience. Yeah, <laughs> it's all magical. Mm -hmm. And especially with that attitude, you know, <laughs> <laughs> it is just fabulous. I am just having such a great time. Yeah, yeah. This is this is one of the things that I love about you and Ellie Tom as well. You know, you just have this this magical being about you this way of seeing the world where you're always able to pick the silver lining from from the cloud you know even if the sun is not shining you you still know that the light is there you're able to understand yeah. at some some deep level that all is well like, all I admire is that. well right yeah. jerome you're so right all is well at the time you may not think all is well but you know it's all well it's all happening for for a reason and and all as well that you may want to find like oh maybe this is this is but, it, but in the bigger picture we're not able to see the bigger picture right but in the bigger picture things all as well mm -hmm. yeah and we keep following the highest joy and then we there's no choice but everything to be well wow. so yeah <laughs> so it's it's like um how they say the universe conspires to assist you you know Yes, Jerome, it does. And I have seen it countless times. Mm -hmm. People come into your life and they say, oh, wow. And it becomes, and then, you know, things just happen where it just magically, you know, it just happens. Whatever you were, your thoughts and your emotions and your desires, it just happens because people come along in your way and it makes it happen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like I met Veronica, right? And right. it just happened. And just like, oh, okay, let's do it. You know, it just, it just happens, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, yeah. So different situations, events, locations, even people, different individuals can come into your life that are, are drawn to you because of, you know, what you're radiating, what you're emitting, what you're putting out is being reflected, what you're projecting is reflecting. Yeah. That's why the highest joy, because you keep following your highest joy and you're going to keep being in that vibration. Mm -hmm. you can attract people, like-minded kind of people to you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's what I have done. And it's, it's worked out. It's been working out beautifully for me. So I want to be able to to kind of all the, the stuff that I have learned over the years to be able to to put the package that and then to be able to 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 give back to people who want to be on this path. Because I think the fastest way to manifest things is if you're on this breath air and path, I tell you, it is really fast to manifest things. You know? So I think, uh, yeah, and that and, and spirituality go hand in hand because once you start getting on this path, you have no choice but to kind of bring spirituality into it because you do we are spiritual beings so it just happens yeah 
the things start manifesting pretty quick. Yeah, 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 yeah. You lighten up and you die, it starts manifesting. As, as long as your, your heart is into it, yeah. The heart is the heart. Yeah, go ahead. The heart is what? Is the key. The heart is the key. Okay, I like that. The heart is the key that opens up all the locks. The heart is the key that that unlocks the doors, you know. Yeah. Keys open doors and the heart is the key. I like that. Yeah. So, you know, Rocky, one of the other things that I admire about you and that I've always been fascinated by, it's blown my mind as I've watched you in your journey, is your travels. Like, speaking of all the locations that you've been to, first off, like, how many countries have you actually visited? I've been to about 100 countries. 100 countries. Yeah, yeah. I just love traveling, seeing different places, different people, different cultures, you know. Yeah, it's been fun. Before it used to be different cuisine, but now cuisine doesn't matter to me. But, but you know what, just different, just, you know, it actually opens your mind when you're traveling. You just, it just, your mind is so much more expansive because there are different places, different, different things you have to see, different like transportation, how to get from one place to the other. There's so much going on in your mind. It just keeps you so vibrant actually when you travel. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you told me, you know, you told me that one of your favorite songs when you were younger, it went like, sweet dreams are made of these. Who am I to disagree? What is it? Travel the world. And the seven seas. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody's looking for something. Yeah, yeah, there you it's go. Absolutely, Jerome. Oh, my gosh. That was actually, I was, I, as a kid, I used to listen to I was like, oh, it would be wonderful to travel the world in the seven seas, you know? I never knew that I would be able to travel so much in my life. But, oh, it's been great. I've been traveling for many years. And, <clears throat> yeah, it's been wonderful. I have enjoyed it immensely. I wouldn't have it any other way. So even singing that song when you were a child, you know, <clears throat> singing that song, you were manifesting, you know? Yeah, right? Yeah. We don't realize it, but when your heart is into it and you feel and you're thinking about all the places in the world, travel the world and the seven seas, wow, how would that be, right? <laughs> it was such a nice song as well, so <laughs> that helped. Yeah. You know, and on your travels, because you've done a lot of travel vlogging as well on your YouTube channel, as well, hand in hand with the pranic living and you talking about your journey, you've talked about your travels and, and what it meant to be in different places. How has being pranic or being on this breatharian path assisted you when going from place to place? Oh, my gosh. It's the easiest. You never have to worry about food. You don't have to worry about like you know the restaurants where they're going to serve nothing it doesn't matter what cuisine because before when i was a vegetarian or a vegan it's like oh do they have vegan restaurants vegan? now you don't have to worry about any of that it doesn't matter what they serve because you're not going there <laughs> you know? so it's, it's been really easy uh to travel because you're independent of, of the restaurant and even during covid i've been traveling and you know restaurants will be closed and things like that and and it doesn't really matter because grocery stores are always open and i can always get my nut milk so mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So it's been great. It's been great. Yeah, it's it's so liberating to try. It's so liberating mm -hmm. to travel uh, when when you're on the Breatharian path. It is really liberating. You you're not bound to anything. It's mm -hmm. just you can just go and just travel. Yeah, I remember hearing Jasmine Heen talk about it one time, and she said, "You never have to worry about reading the labels." You know? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you can go exactly. wherever you want. Yeah, you know. Exactly. Yeah. Right, because it's a different language. You don't have to worry about reading the labels. You don't have to worry about, like, speaking the language to figure out what to order and reading the menu. None of that. Because I don't go to restaurants anymore. Wow. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I don't go to restaurants. There's no restaurant that will have what I want, really, because I don't have onion or garlic, right? So I can't even order a soup. So there are no restaurants. That I, I don't go to restaurants. Wow. Wow. And it's so liberating. I've been traveling like with my son and my friend. They'll go to the restaurant. I'll say, okay, I'll catch up with you guys later. And it's so liberating. I don't have to sit down, spend so many hours and, you know, like what to eat. And mm -hmm. it becomes too cumbersome. So. Yeah. What, do you, what do you do instead? While, while your, your group members are, are at the restaurants, what do you do? Oh, well, I can meditate in my room. I'll be in my room or something, meditate, just catch up on things, just be by myself. I really enjoy time to myself, so I don't always need to be with people doing things. So it's kind of time for me to be with myself. Mm -hmm. Maybe read something, read a book, or just whatever it is that I'm, I'm doing right that that time. Maybe make a YouTube video or something, you know, just time to myself. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. 
So getting to know yourself more, just spending time with yourself. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 You know, another thing that you mentioned is, you know, being able to, to go around and to travel to all these different places during a time period where there's a lot of fear, there's a lot of stress, there's a lot of anxiety in the air and other people right. are feeling it. But that, it seems to bounce off of you. I mean, I remember that there was a time you talked about you went on a news fast. <laughs> Can you talk about that? Right. It went on a news fast. So I said, okay, I'm because you know, news is like it just comes down with all this negative, negative. I'm like, okay, you know, I'm done with all this. I'm going on a news fast. I'm not gonna watch the news. I don't know anything about the news. I don't know anything. So then I here I am. I my son and I, we plan on going to Yerevan, okay? So we go to Yerevan and it turns out that they're about to go to war with their neighbor or something and so they there was this whole like we go there and all of a sudden like the roads are blocked you can't go here and then you see all these military vehicles going by i'm like what's going on you know like, and no oh what it was is i was supposed to rent a car to to go into the mountains right mm -hmm. and they the car rental company says oh you know we can't rent a car i'm like well why not they're like God, would you know what's going on? Oh, I know what's going on. Um, so basically, I closed the, the road because there was some conflict between the neighboring country and all that. So anyways, um, we managed to rent a car anyways. And we went up there, you know, some like, there was this car on the side of the road. And, and they said, for rent. I'm like, okay, why don't we call him? He, I was like, let's rent it. You know what I'm <laughs> So we rented the car and we just took off. We just went up into the mountains and we saw all these military vehicles going by. And I was like, oh, wow. And they're waving to them. And it was like, we were having such a good time uh, because we were so clueless about what was happening, you know? So it's almost sometimes the less you get involved in the story that's happening in the, the collective consciousness, you, you get to live in your own reality. You know, you make your own reality. So we were, my son and I were making our own reality. We were going everywhere, traveling around in our car and everything. And so, yeah, it was oh a great time. <laughs> what a wonderful thought. Thank you for sharing that story. You know, I love hearing stories like that. It just, <laughs> it just lets me know, like, you know, not to worry. They say worry is a form of praying for what you don't want. You exactly, know? Jerome. So well put. Yeah. So just let the worries, I mean, we should just try. I mean, sometimes it's hard, but generally just let the worries go. Oh, there's war going on. Oh, but there's a car that we can rent. Sure, we'll call them. And we called them. He just came down. He goes, you, you want to rent the car? I'm like, yeah. And he goes, are you a good driver? I'm like, yeah, I'm a great driver. He's like, normally I don't rent to people that are not locals. I'm like, oh, no, I'll be great. And then he looked at me and then he looked at my son. He's like, yeah, I think they'll be okay. So, but, oh, by the way, Jerome, oh, my God. That day I got four speeding tickets. I had never in my life gotten a speeding ticket, okay? You were punching <laughs> it. Oh. No, no, I think their rules are so different. Like, okay. if you're on this road, this kind of highway is this much. If you're on this kind of road, it's this. But then sometimes you don't know which road, we, if you're on a highway or you're on a regular road, right? Mm -hmm. But I ended up getting four, four tickets in one day. I was like, oh, my God. <laughs> so, anyways, he sent me a message, the guy who owned the car. So, I ended up, like, you know paying for the tickets but but anyways it was it was a shocker for me because i had never gotten even one ticket and i go to yerevan and ended up getting four tickets in one day so, mm -hmm. and, <laughs> so. and and i remember you also said that at one point you were in a country and didn't even know that there was about to be a lockdown and you managed to fly out just before the lockdown yeah yeah i was in yeah there's so many times this has happened i was in belarus and there was um actually protests that had come out everywhere and and if my my taxi driver had not called me because we had to go to the airport they were going to block all the roads we are clueless to this okay they were going to block all the roads and everything my taxi driver calls he goes you know what there's about to be a pro protest we need to get out right now come downstairs we're like okay we go downstairs we quickly pack up everything and as we're leaving they're blocking the roads and everything and then we, he says how we just come 20 minutes later we wouldn't have been able to go to the airport i was like oh wow <laughs> you know what i'm saying it's just so 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 the lesson learned is not to be so clueless about the country you're going to. You know but 20 minutes, a 20 minute difference. 20 minutes. Otherwise, 20, it, minute. 20 minutes would have made the difference. If I, if we had left 20 minutes later, the whole road was blocked off. It was in the news as well in Belarus, you know. The, the dictator of Belarus was basically the fraud election or something that was going on. And people were protesting the whole thing. So anyways, 
we were like, oh, and the great thing about Belarus is nobody wore a mask. This was in the height of the COVID thing. And it was like in other countries, like pre-COVID times. Mm -hmm. So we had a great time. And then we went to the airport. We had a great time. We, it was it was like we were in a movie or something, you know, <laughs> we were driving and there's people honking and there's like all kinds of stuff, people closing the roads off. And here we are just escaping into the, to the, um, to the airport to get out mm -hmm. of the country mm -hmm. because before the country was going to get locked down. So we left. Right. Okay. You just gave me another question, Rocky. Yeah. So you said before that we create our reality, you know, like this movie that we're living in that we create it, right? So do you believe in luck? I think I believe in divine timing. There's, okay. yeah, I think we may, we can call it luck. You can call it whatever you want, but, but I feel like it, yeah, I, I think things come to you because, mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, I think I was looked after actually. So, oh, so like guardians. Guardians, yeah. Okay. You can call it. I think I was looked after. I think the, I, even throughout my travels, I went, I landed up in China and I, I tell you, there was like, I, Oh my God, it was horrible because it was like so hot and mm -hmm. I couldn't get the exchange for my dollars, right? Mm -hmm. And I was like, how am I going to do this? And, and there, no one spoke English. So we got the taxi guy there and the Uber doesn't work there. And then we got a taxi guy. He goes, it's so many yuan. I was like, oh my God, we don't R&B. And I was like, oh, we don't have that much. So we go to another guy and their time before that, I had gone to uh, China and I had left over so much uh, R&B there their local currency and we asked the second guy i said how much does it take us to, to the uh, the hotel and he said exactly the amount that i had so it was it just worked out perfectly otherwise i wouldn't know how to get to the hotel because you had the exact amount, exact amount? <laughs> this is what i mean like this is what i'm talking about <laughs> I had, and how did i have the exact amount from the time before when i went a few years ago to china and you know, I didn't spend so I had the exact amount to give this guy to take me to, to the hotel. Mm -hmm. It was I, like, yeah. it was, I was unbelievable. It was, and so many things like that in my travels has happened. There was another time when uh, I, we, we were going on our way to Vienna and uh, the train stopped and they, and no one spoke English over there. And we're like, we didn't know when the next train was coming. We thought it was going to be evening and all that. And we were going from one platform to the other. And then I said, you know, forget this. Let's go outside and get a taxi. And they said, there's no taxis available, nothing. And so my son and I, I was talking with my son at the time, we go outside and in the distance, we see a taxi uh, loading some people in there. And so I run over, we run over there. They were like, where can we get a taxi? So they they already closed the door. Everything was done. They're about to drive off. And I, I knock on the driver's door. I said, where can I get a taxi? And then all the, he goes, I don't know. He just, he just didn't want to deal with me. He's like, I don't know. And then all of a sudden the door opened to, to this van that was about to go. Okay. Mm -hmm. And, and, and the woman said, how many of you are there? I said, the two of us, she goes, come sit in the car. We'll drop you off to your hotel. And this is like, <laughs> this is like two hours away. Right. Like, and and they didn't take any money because I didn't have any money to local currency to give them, so they they give you a ride for free. It's like, anyways, things like that just happen. I just it's just I can go on and on, but anyways, it just I feel like the universe has my back. It has your back. <laughs> it has your back. You just get free rides. People just open their doors for you. Just things are just you know. Ah, I had just... the right amount of uh, currency to get myself to the hotel. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so, so yeah i just feel like those are times that i was just coming into this i was like how is it such a coincidence and i feel like no it's not a coincidence i it, you can think of it as a coincidence but i just feel that you know if you're kind of following your highest joy and you're doing things things just kind of happen universe because mm -hmm. you think when you think about it it's like what are the possibilities like what are the chances if you i know? had come it, if i had come outside to get the taxi just Two minutes later, the taxi would have been gone. Or two minutes earlier, I wouldn't have been able to get it, right? I had to be there right there at that time, and the door opened up, and the woman said, come inside. Divine timing. <laughs> Divine timing. Wow. Wow. So, you know, Rocky, when it comes to being on this pranic journey and being on this breatharian path, some people, when they go on a vacation, it ends up turning into a staycation, you know? So... When it comes to your solid food vacation, how long have you been without solid food at this point? Almost four years now. It's three and a half years. Four yeah. years almost. almost. Almost four years. Without solid food. No solid food, yeah. Four years. Would, would you have ever thought this was possible? 
Uh, before the birth hand path? No, but when I, there was, I didn't think, I thought, you know, the first year I'll do it. And I didn't know what was going to happen after that, but I just went with the flow. I'm like, okay, it was like this calling. It's like, okay, I'm just going to do it. And so, you know, I keep seeing the benefits of being on this path. And so there's no way that I would go back because mm -hmm. this path has brought me so much joy and so like the universe has my back when I'm on this path. Why would I do anything else kind of? Yeah. <laughs> And, and what inspired you in the beginning? Because I've always seen you as one of those individuals who, when the rest of the world asks why, you ask, why not? You know? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, I, what, um, I've always been into health and wellness and, and, and all that kind of stuff. And so I think um, I was looking for something. Okay. The big thing was, you know, I was like, okay, the food is toxic, the, the air we breathe is toxic, the water we drink is, everything is toxic. And then, then I just, uh, online, I heard about breatharians and stuff. And I was like, wow, there are people that can, that can live without actually eating. And that just inspired me, like, to no end. Once I found, once I heard about that, there was no looking back. I was like, ah, oh, what is it? What is it? I was looking online, trying to find everything, you know? So, yeah. And so it lit a fire within you. Oh, totally, totally fired within me. Yeah, 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 yeah. It was, it was, it was like, I have to do this. Mm -hmm. And now that I've done it, I feel like that others can, if I can do it, I feel like others can do it as well. And I have learned so much along my way that, that I'm uh, just so excited to share that with people that are going to come on, on the retreat. And I just want to share that, you know, the little different things that I have done throughout the time and bring spirituality into it and bring different tools that they can use to help them sustain themselves on this path. So I am really excited. We're actually, my, my friend and I, Veronica and I are really, really excited to put this retreat on. Yeah. Yeah, I always remember watching that video of you when you described how you first came upon this path and what inspired you. And you said these four magic words, Rocky, four magic words that I feel like can open up a whole new world for, for somebody, for anything. But those words were, wouldn't it be nice? <laughs> okay. You know, like, okay. wouldn't it be nice? Yeah. Yeah. To live without like this, to live without that, to be, to have this kind of freedom, like, wouldn't it be nice? You know? Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Wouldn't it be nice? I mean, just think about, it. forget about all that you would have to do, but wouldn't it be nice if you could just live <laughs> without having to worry about food? Wow. Wow. Yeah. So can you, can you tell us, you know, in a, in a few words each year, what, what did you deal with each year when it came to, because I know that some years it was more spiritual, some years it might have been more physical, some years it might have been more mental. What has been like, you know, this journey like for you in these four years that you've been without solid food? Yeah, the first year was very, very physical, um, mm -hmm. dealing with my food addiction. Um, mm -hmm. When I say addiction, it's not like it's just, you know, your food cravings and stuff. Um, so dealing with that, because I feel in a way there, we are all in a way addicted to food, right? The food is, is, is a very strong kind of addic addiction. So I feel that, um, yeah, so that was what it, first year was really dealing with it, you know, almost like food porn, like looking through these different pictures of, of food and say, oh, that looks so good, you know, oh, Oh, that looks so good. You know? Oh, like, so like salivating on, on these pictures, these photos and stuff. Yeah. Okay. And then well, pa passing my restaurant, say, oh, I wonder what they serve in that restaurant. Oh, ah, maybe there's pizza in that restaurant. <laughs> so, yeah, things like that. But um, the first year it was difficult, um, but it was just like I told myself that I'm going to do it one year, come what may, I'm going to do mm. it one year, you know. And so that was my thing to just do it for one year whatever happened and the carrot and the stick yeah 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 so i used the stick and the carrot was all the little treats that i can give myself that were liquid so mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah and you said you said no matter what come what may and you said i can have it as long as it's liquid i can yeah. have it i yes. can have it because you have to be gentle with yourself i feel like it's like your child your inner child will get really upset so then i would give my inner child some ice cream you know, it's like, okay, you want to have this, but why don't we, you know, you really like this kind of ice cream. Why don't we treat you to some ice cream? So it was almost like kind of, you know, getting to that point where it's not like you're depriving yourself, but it's like you're giving yourself something else um, mm -hmm. that, that you can have. Mm 
Like, because mm-hmm, mm-hmm. my whole thing was to be on liquid, so ice cream is liquid because it melts. So it's like, okay, that's ice cream. <laughs> yeah. So, so what was year two like? What was the second year like for you? Year two was hmm, good question. I think I was just kind of getting more. It was it was a transition from the very physical wanting food to getting more into the spiritual kind of uh, realm. Right. So mm-hmm. it was getting more into the spirit. I because when I came into this room, I had no spirituality in me. Mm. Period. Oh. Only yeah. reason why I wanted to come in here is wouldn't it be nice to live without mm. food, right? And there was no such thing as like you know this the spirituality. I mean, what is spirituality? I didn't know anything about it. Mm. So, so that was my door. It opened into spirit. I'm like, oh, this. Oh, okay. And so I, it just kind of that's how I got into. Was 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 that the time that you started getting all of those upgrades? Because yeah. I remember you were you were talking about a lot of upgrades that your body was going through. Right, right. So that was coming into my third year. Yeah, as I was like the end of my second year into my third year, because the spirituality kind of aspect kind of went in there, and then my third eye opened, and then what happened was all these supernatural type of things started happening. So, I mean, there was no choice for me to go into spirituality because it's like, how is all this stuff happening, right? I mean, these upgrades were like the energy comes into my body and does stuff and I, I feel like an upgrade has happened. I mean, those things are like, how does that happen, right? Mm-hmm. I'm real. Like, it happened three times like that. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, okay, now, now I find myself sometimes you know, I'm saying, okay, now come on, go ahead, give me another upgrade. I'm okay for, for you to, to give me an upgrade. But it's not happening. <laughs> so, in divine timing. <laughs> so you were, you were catapulted into this supernatural world of like, you said you weren't even a spiritual person, but now here you are receiving all these downloads, receiving all this data and feeling this energy and seeing energy on a whole new yeah. level. Yes, yes. My whole body, and, and, and the key to the whole thing is lightening up on your diet. This whole breatharian path actually takes you there. Mm-hmm. So the more you lighten up more. So my second year, then coming into my third year, I felt all this. I mean, if, if you, you know, obviously you, you watch the YouTube videos, but it was really weird stuff like coming in, you know, like this psychic surgery, like, you know, the stuff going into my brain. It's like, I don't know what it was doing, this energy mm-hmm. that came into my brain, like into my neck and then through my body and then my stomach. It was like turning something around in my stomach. I feel like those were all upgrades. Something was happening for me to continue on this path. Mm-hmm. Do, you, do you feel like um, if it was a being that was assisting you through this upgrade or through this, this software update, as it were, do you feel like this was a benevolent being Oh, yeah, totally. Totally. Yeah, yeah. Because it did its job and it left. Okay. It is not like it did any kind of harm to me. And actually, when it was like, when it, it was like a um, in my belly button, it was like it was tuning something in. And after I finished tuning it, I felt so much better. And then it left. So it was like helping me, you know? It like something was off in my belly button, and all of a sudden, you know how the clock on the the second hand clock or the it just kind of kind of did something. And I was like, "Wow, oh, I feel so much better!" And then it left. You know? Was it was it like adjusting your frequency or something? Something it must have, yeah. In my heart, it was expanding and contracting. It was almost like a rebirth of my heart. It was like letting go of the old and allowing the new to come in. I almost felt like I was going to die that time, right? Because it was like expanding, contracting, expanding, contracting. I was like, oh, I can't breathe. Like, oh, but I guess I needed to do that to get, to give me that upgrade or to let go of whatever that was in my heart that didn't serve me. Mm -hmm. So I guess it helped me along the path. And I feel so lucky and fortunate that I had these, I don't know, these being or the being or what being or what, (laughs) I don't know. But Mm -hmm. I also feel so lucky that, that, that these things have happened to me that I've experienced it because you know when when in the spiritual world they say that you're not your body right and you really feel you're just consciousness observing your body when there's something else is in your body doing it your mm-hmm. body you have no control of your body your body is independent of you you know yeah because yeah. this this being that was assisting you you couldn't see it right but you could feel it you right, can feel you it and felt it, it pushing you back or something. Yeah, like I was lying in bed and it would just expand and contract. And I was like, it was contracting so much. And I said, no, don't do it. I'm going to die. Like, this is just too much. And then I would fight it off. 
And the moment I would relax, you'll come back again to do the mm. same thing. And I was like, what is it that you want? Stop it. Like, I don't want this. Like, like go away. And I would fight it off, right? Because I thought something was going to happen to my heart because it was really compressing my heart and expanding my heart. So I would keep fighting it off. And then I got to the point where I couldn't sleep. Every time I relaxed, it would come again. And then, then I said, you know what? I surrender. Mm. Go ahead. Mm. Go ahead. Do what it is that you need to do. I surrender. And the moment I surrendered, it did what it needed to do, and it left. <laughs> it's almost like you have to surrender at some point, you know? It's like we have to realize that we're not completely in control. I mean, there's other, other forces in play. So sometimes when you just surrender and let things just be, it makes it easier. Wow. Wow. That is... Wow, that's so emotional. <laughs> <laughs> and now and now your heart is wide open. Yeah, now my heart is like I don't know what it did, but it whatever it was, it just squeezed whatever wasn't working and just expanded and squeezed whatever wasn't working in some spiritual level. Cuz it was really profound, yeah. Wow, you know, the way you describe it, Rocky, it sounds like an energetic purge, like it was getting rid of what was no longer necessary, no longer needed. You're right, Jerome. I felt that way. And then afterwards, a lot of shifts started feel. I started feeling a lot of shifts within me, you know, mm -hmm. more compassion, more love, more awe. And things at that time were just starting to happen, like synchronicities. Mm -hmm. If I wanted, it happens. If I wanted, it happens. It's just like, you know. I told you about the, the, the festival, right? I was like, I was like, oh, I would like to be part of the pranic world. And then the next thing you know, I get a message. Oh, have you been invited? I'm like, what did you just hear? Like, you know, it's like, boom, boom, boom. Things just started happening. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow. So how has year three going into year number four been for you now on this pranic journey? I think it's, I've kind of come back to year one where mm -hmm. I'm coming back to, okay, we, uh, let's kind of figure out this ingesting thing, you know, let's see how we can make it lighter and lighter, you know? So I think I'm coming back to, to your one. Okay. So yeah. circling back to the beginning. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because you're never finished. You just have to keep, it gets better and better. So I have to come back to your one. Yeah. <laughs> So it's not a straight line as people think it would be. It's it's more of like a spiral yes, or a circle. Yes, absolutely, Jerome. It's a spiral. I mean, when we learn things, it's like, okay, we learn it, but then you learn it at a different level. Then you learn it at a different level, right? So I'm coming back to year one mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and what I'm ingesting and what I'm doing. It's like it's coming back to that because I want to become lighter and lighter. So I'm coming back to that. So. Wow. You know, recently, one of your accomplishments I was, I felt like I was victorious with you. Like I was triumphant with you. Can you, uh, can you walk us through the 10K and what it meant for you to do that? Oh, thank you so much, Jerome. That was, you know what? That was like a dream. Like I had never, ever in my life thought that I, I couldn't run. First of all, I couldn't go on the treadmill. I couldn't run. I couldn't do any of that because I would have knee problems, right? So I couldn't before, do before this path, yeah. Yeah, before this path, I couldn't do it. Then when I started getting on this path, you know, my knee problems, so it, was, it wasn't hurting as much. And then I can run more and I can run more. And, you know, I'd go to the gym and I'd run a little bit. But never, ever, ever, Jerome, thought that I would ever participate in a marathon, like me in a marathon. Like, like you know. And so, anyways, I was in India at the time. And my friend, he's a runner. So he's going to do the marathon. And he goes, wait, why don't we go there? And then, you know, we'll, you know, you can be there or whatever. He didn't think I'm going to participate. And I said, huh, interesting. And I'm looking at as he's registering, there's like a 5K and a 10K. And here I'm like, I'm like, well, maybe I can do a 5K. He goes, oh, really? If you want to do a 5K, why don't you do a 10K? Because 5K is too easy. I was like, you think so? I can do a 10K? He goes, yeah. And so I participated in the, the 10K. And it was really a dream come true. Because you know what? Not only, I came in four. Like I never had practiced or, or, or like, you know, ever thought about doing these things. But, mm -hmm. but and I was just running at my own pace. So, so I have to tell you, this is what happened. Okay. okay. In the morning. I didn't have any water. So the night before, I had water to hydrate mm. myself. Mm. In the morning, I had no water because I knew if I had water, it would weigh me down, mm. right? 
So I had no water. And I said, okay, I'm going to do this marathon. So I go there and like, you know, I'm just running and running and passing up people. I'm not thinking that anything, I don't know anything about marathons. I don't know anything about people running. I don't know about runners. I don't know anything. I'm just doing my own thing in my own little vision. I'm just running, 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 running. Here I am passing everybody up, passing everybody up, running, running, running. And then these, these water station people are stopping to have water. And here I am running, 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 running. And I keep running. I don't stop for water. I don't stop for snacks or anything like that because I'm not thirsty. So why should right. I stop, right? So I keep going, going, going. And then before you know it, I mean, I kind of missed third place by 20 seconds or something. But, you know, and I allowed the woman because she really wanted to kind of beat me. And I was like, okay, go ahead. And I didn't even know <clears throat> what place people were in. Mm. I didn't even know I was, I was in four. Because you weren't even competing, really. I've been competing. I didn't know what. I just landed there, and people were like, oh, well, you're fourth. And I was like, oh, you mean I could have been second, too. I, I could have beat that other woman, you know what I'm saying? But I wasn't competing. I was going in for the joy of just being able to run and to experience just being the freedom of running. There is, there is this, I don't know, running. I can understand why runners run, because you really get this freedom when you're running on the road and you're just running and running. Running. Yeah. yeah, yeah. They call it a runner's high too. You know? Absolutely, yeah. So I finished the mar the the ten k, and then there was a water station afterwards, and I didn't have water then either. So you know, I did the whole thing before and after without having water, and I think that also saved time because if I had to stop for water, then I probably wouldn't have been able to have the time that I had. So yeah. yeah. So, like, can you describe the feeling, or or what was the most impressive thing to you about you being able to? you know, go throughout that and to be able to complete it after years of having all that joint pain and all those issues and all those things, like, how did that feel for you? The one word that comes to mind, Jerome, is freedom. Okay. When you have freedom from food, you have freedom from, from aches and pains, you're just almost elevated to a different level because it's almost like you don't have to worry about those things. You didn't have to worry about drinking anything. You didn't have to worry about joint pains. You just kept running and running and running. And you didn't care about competition either. You were just doing for the joy of doing it. And you just keep running and running and running. And and you're on this runner's high. It was an elevated run too. So, you know, it was it was tough. But yeah, it was it was it was one of those things that I was so thrilled to pieces that I actually kind of was able to partake in a 10K run, coming from the background that I came from, where I couldn't even be on the treadmill for like two or three days, and my knees would start hurting. Then I'd have to go on the elliptical machine because I couldn't run, and you know, all those joint pains, like the knee pains I used to have. So, so you know, there's one more reason to be on the Breatharian path, because <laughs> it's just, it's, it's liberation, it's freedom to right. live your life. Yeah, it reminds me also of seeing Ellie Tom. There were times where he would bike, he would bike ride across states, across state lines. And yeah. he would tell about people who were like offering him water bottles. You know, they were raising water bottles for him to take. And he was like, you know, turning it down politely, like saying, no, that, that'll just slow me down. Yeah, you know? yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, same thing happened when I was running. They're like, have some water. Like the people, because they saw me running and coming back. And I'm like, no, I don't need water. I'm just going to keep running, you know? So, and then it had biscuits and bananas. And I'm like, who's having biscuits and bananas? Like, is that going to really weigh you down? <laughs> but. Mm. Well, I do remember back in the day, whenever you would get a Charlie horse or a cramp in your leg or something, our friends, my friends around the neighborhood, they used to have this thing where they would say, either stretch it out or eat a banana for some oh, reason. Oh, I don't know okay. why they would say that. Yeah. The potassium in it, maybe, yeah. Maybe the potassium, yeah. We, we have one of our friends, Rocky, Victoria, down here. She said, the video you made about the 10K inspires me so much. I've been running more and more after watching. Oh, Victoria, you're so sweet. Thank you so much. I'm so glad that it has inspired you in some way. Wow, amazing. Shout out to Victoria. Yeah, thank you for joining, Victoria, and much love to you. Yeah. So, oh, my goodness. You know, Rocky, how would you say, because you, you made a comparison between the breatharian lifestyle and the runner's lifestyle. So yeah. there were a lot of things, you know, if you could perhaps break down to us, like, I know you talked about focus, you talked about patience, you talked about exercise. And you talked about effort and dedication. So what are some of the comparisons that you started to draw between both of those lifestyles? 
Yeah, um, I don't exactly remember what I spoke about, but what I can think about now <laughs> is that, you know, for the runners, there's a lot of patience. I mean, you have to keep at it, keep at it, and keep the patience. How do you beat people by a few seconds or whatever? I mean, you know, beat your, your own record by a few seconds. You have to keep at it, keep practicing, and the effort and the perseverance that goes into it. I think the breathing path requires the same. I, I feel like sometimes people think that it's just supposed to kind of happen. And yeah. I think for some, maybe for some people, it just kind of happens. But it's like anything that you want to get good at. You have to put the time, dedication, and energy into it. And I think the runners do that. They they keep, they run every day. They, you know, they, they have like their sh special shoes they buy or, you know, I mean, they, they do all kinds of stuff that, you know, they do elevated runs and they do this. And so I feel like their elevated run will be like our fasting or something, mm -hmm. right? Well, you know, so there are a lot of things that they do and a lot of things that we can do on our breatharian path as well. Like do like, you know, three and a half day fast, they fast difficult you can do a 24-hour fast you know mm -hmm. so those are things to keep us on the path as runners they stay on the path they're in like up to speed with what they're doing right and to be a breatharian it's not like okay well the universe has my back universe does have your back but you do need to put in that kind of you know what it takes to, to you know you have to have the carrot and stick like i said so yeah mm -hmm. yeah wow so it's like um being able to have I guess, you know, your routines or your regimens or even your rituals that allow you to stick with it, that allow you to stay on the journey. Yeah. Yes, true. Yeah. And and also, if, if, if it, it's not a path for everybody, but if you find joy in it, then it won't be such a chore. You know what I'm saying? You'd be like, oh, I want to do it. Do it. If you're finding it to be a chore, then maybe this is not the path for you, right? I mean, maybe there might be something else that's for you, right? But if, it, but it shouldn't be like a chore. It should be, okay, I'm going to, oh, I'm going to do a three and a half day dry. Or, okay, I'm going to do this. You know, different things you want to do because you want to get better and better and better at it. And that's how I've approached it because mm -hmm. that's, and I think the runners do the same thing. They, they do all kinds of stuff. I mean, right. I, to, to get, get better at their timings, right? So, yeah. I love that you pointed out that point as well, Rocky. I think that's so key. It's being able to enjoy the journey, you know, being able to enjoy. It's like, this is not a stressful journey. This is a stress-free journey, you know. Stress is not really conducive for the amount of conductivity that would sustain you. Absolutely. Because it's not, if you're going to come in with stress and maybe you can do something that doesn't cause stress, you know, mm -hmm. if, if the breath and lifestyle is causing stress and maybe you kind of need to let up a little bit and do something else that you enjoy doing and find out maybe this is not the path for you. Maybe this is a path for you, or maybe it's not the path for you now, but maybe it'll be later. You know what I'm saying? So it's all about joy, but just follow your highest joy and it'll lead you to your path. Yeah. Wow. So it's, it's not for everybody. It's not like, um, this is one of the things that I, I strive to, to allow people to, to tell people as well, because I feel like I'm not trying to push it on anybody or yeah. press it on anybody, but just to make people apparent that there is a possibility, you know, right. that I didn't even know that there was this possibility. Yes, you know? exactly. Yeah. Yeah, there's a positive. I mean, it is there. I mean, because people are living this lifestyle, but it's obviously not for everybody. You know, maybe right. they have their own calling in their life. Maybe there's other things that they want to do. So, so it's for it's their own individual thing. And if it's not your calling and you find it stressful, then maybe do something that you do enjoy doing. And then maybe you can always come back to this. Maybe it's not now. Maybe it's later. You know. So, mm -hmm. Yeah. And what are the other things that you enjoy doing that lights you up when it comes to? You know, I know that you have routines and regimens with the breath work, with yoga, with, you know, pranayamas. Like, what are some of the things that you like to do that increase the amount of uh, magnetism and electricity? Well, you know what? After that run, I have been going to the gym every single day and I've been running on the treadmill. And so I, I do, I've been trying to like, I'm like, okay, next time I go, maybe I'll, I'll probably in the marathon so so i've been running uh and i i really enjoy running and i and, and i do the strength master to build a little strength in my legs and i do all different kinds of things to kind of help with my running so yeah not that i want to be a runner but i just feel like you know it, it gives me a lot of joy to do it. Mm -hmm. so, yeah and those are some of the things i do um you know i i just like to connect with people and just my whole thing is to help people so if if you know if people need you know a, a friend or or you know people that maybe have reached out to me to to help them in whatever way i can help them so that gives me a lot of joy actually. yeah like the importance of being in service yeah you know? yeah i think that's a big one i remember you talked about reading jasmine's books you know food of the gods and 
I know she wrote uh, Chronic Nourishment 101. Yes. And Jasmine Heen talks about one of the essential components for this lifestyle is being in service. Yes. Yeah. Because it raises, I feel like when you're in service, what happens is you, you have all this gratitude and the people appreciate and, and you're giving and it's, it's a win-win. When you're in service, it's not like you're getting so much more, so much more probably than what you're giving, you know. So, and, and it gives you, it puts you in a good space and good vibrational space. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Lewis, we have Lewis down here. Shout out to Lewis. He says, the main thing I'm receiving is that the body does heal itself by itself. And when the body heals, we get to connect to spirit, our calling and our happiness. Wow. Beautifully said. Wow. The wow. body does heal itself. Yes. So you and would it, resonate with that? Oh, totally. Yeah. I mean, just leave the body alone. That's why we do the three and a half day dry, right? To leave the body alone, let it heal itself. You know, let it get rid of whatever it does. It's not serving it, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. totally. Thanks for that. Yeah. Victoria calls that being in service, the helper's high. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah, that feeling of reciprocity. It's like, isn't there, there are feel good chemicals in the body that fire when we're doing something when we're in service, like they talk about the oxytocin, you know, yeah. the, the serotonin, the dopamine, the, the endorphins, like all these feel good chemicals that start rushing through the body when we're in service. Yeah, 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 totally. And you feel it when you're when you're in service. And that's one of the reasons why I want to do the retreats. It's, mm -hmm. it's, um, it's I feel like that's a service to to people and and you know I mean it's so of a service that we're not it's we're not really even doing it for the money we're doing it for the service of of, of be allowing people to come and experience this beautiful place that we have and they can come and then they can do the whole breatharian initiation with the spiritual component together and it's yeah and so right so we're having like a fifty percent off so it's basically like it's it's a, it's a, for for like say three hundred and seventy five dollars for for uh, seven nights and eight days, a whole breatharian retreat, everything inclusive. I mean, that's a price that's hard to beat, I think. <laughs> you know? yeah. So, yeah. So that's it. Being a service, I feel like that's kind of giving back. Yeah. You know, speaking of giving back, Rocky, the way that you give back is so commendable. Like, I, I just checked, and you're at over a thousand subscribers on your YouTube channel, and you have exactly 100 videos. So you've done 100 videos just giving of yourself, speaking your truth and enlightening people to these things about light, lightening up, you know? Yeah. And it's like, I, I know that there aren't so many people speaking on this journey. Sometimes you have to really do a lot of digging to find a lot of people who are talking about it. But I'm yes. sure there's so many people that are living it that aren't talking about it. So yeah. what made you one of the people that wanted to speak on it and, and tell people about this and, and put yourself out there like this? Good question, Jerome. Yeah, that's a very good question. I'm actually a very private person. So actually, most people that I know me don't know that I have a YouTube channel, right? So I'm very private. I don't like to tell anyone anything. But I felt that that when I was starting on this path, I didn't find too many people kind of reporting on it, seeing how they're doing. And I felt like there was a void there. And I felt like I would like it if I if there was someone that I could follow or kind of see how they were doing on their path. And I said that, you know what? If I go on this path, I'm going to make it a point that I am there to help others who are coming on this path. So I wanted to just put it out there. So, you know, whatever information that whatever I can share, if they can get something from it, that would be that would be really nice for me. Like I would feel I would feel like I'm giving because I would I would like to have been in that position, you know, so I like this is my time to give and 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 be able to um, share my experiences. That's basically what I do, share my experience. I, I try not to tell people what to do because I feel like everyone has their own path. But my main thing is I share my experiences. And from my experiences, I feel like if, if people can draw something from it, maybe not exactly, but something else they can draw from it, then, then that's really good. Um, so basically from my experience, yeah. Yeah, I love that. I love that. You know, one of my favorite YouTubers is a gentleman named uh, Ralph Smart. And he has this YouTube channel called Infinite Waters. And he says, Infinite Waters, diving deep once again. And, you know, breathing in that prana, you know, that good ass prana. And one thing that he tells people, Rocky, is he doesn't tell them what to do. He says, here's what I've learned in my journey. That's how he prefaces things. He's like, one thing I've learned in my journey. 
here's what I've learned in my journey. Let me tell you what I've learned, you know? And so that takes the, you know, takes that judgment off of you should do this or you should yeah. do that, you should be this way. But no, this is something that's helped me. Perhaps it could help you, you know? Absolutely, because we're all so different. What may, what my experience maybe may not be someone else's experience, right? right? If I say, oh, you know, do this, do that, that may not work for you, right? But all I can do is share from my experience and and I have so much experience that, that because of being on it for three and a half years and, and before that, like, you know, other things. So so basically I can just share that. And if that can help, that that's that's great. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's that's what that's been my main thing is to share my experience. Because I, I feel like with the ex experience sharing, you may not you know, draw a direct like correlation, like, oh, I should do this. But there may be something else that, that, that you can draw from it, you know, mm -hmm, something mm -hmm. else. So, so it's for each individual what they want to draw from my experience, right? Right, right. Yeah. And also, you know, you don't know who you're helping, you yeah. know? You have no idea who you're affecting just by putting your experience out there, just by letting people know the things that you're going through while you're going through them. Like, I find it also commendable that you didn't just talk about all the uptimes, you talked about the downtimes. Yeah. You know, you would talk about the things that you struggled with, the yeah. things that you battled with, the things you overcame during the process. Like, that's yeah. like, you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. It was just reporting on what was going on, you know? And sometimes I find like, oh, what am I going to talk about? But, you know, it, like if something really striking, that's why I don't do videos that often because I don't really know what to, to say. Um, sometimes like, oh, there's nothing special that's really that's happened, you know? But when I find something to talk about, then I, I do a video on it. And I say, okay, this is, this is something that's kind of happened to me. Yeah. And now you've developed a following too. I can see on your channel that so many more people are, are like, rallying like they're waiting you know on you to do your next video like when is she gonna do it like oh she just did one you know and oh. they're showing up for you they're commenting because i know at one point in the beginning you had some people that were talking down about you some people that were looking at you and making judgments and they they had some choice words that they wanted to type you know on their keyboards right. and tell right. you about right Right, right. You said that doesn't really happen anymore. Yeah, does that doesn't happen anymore. Before in the beginning, I used to have all kinds of um, comments and stuff that would that would probably discourage, um, would be discouraging. But I, I, you know, I was like, okay, okay, that's okay, that's okay, that's okay. You know, I'm just gonna keep going, keep going. And and now, you know, I don't get any of those, and I just now get. I just, you know, the people that, that are my followers, I am just, I have so much gratitude for them because they're the sweetest, kindest people that are always so supporting of me. I am just so much gratitude for my, for my subscribers or for my viewers. Uh, they are just, just really something special because they're, they're special people. And I, I'm so grateful that, that they're there. Yeah. 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 I'm glad that you, you know, that you pushed through all the, the criticism and all that, you know, the judgment and stuff like somebody, one of my good friends once told me, you know, the only reason or, or people try to bring you down when they think that you're above them, you know, they try to pull you down or that the only reason that you should, um, I forget, I forget, but there's just so many reasons why somebody might not say something to try and bring somebody down because it doesn't make your light shine brighter to dim someone else's you know yeah you know what but, I mean? but i also for me i i also feel that these these people are so you know when they say well how can you live without food like you know they it was just such a such a totally different concept for them that they just no way were going to buy that you know so they had like you said a choice of words for me i completely like devastating like then who i am just putting me down in, in all kinds of ways that they could so you know because it was just almost like this is ridiculous what is she talking about like how, how can she do this she's just starving herself you know what i'm saying like like and i can understand from where they're coming from why they're saying what they're saying mm -hmm. and so for that reason i was like okay okay it's okay i'm gonna keep going keep going <laughs> wow but, so you were you were able to have compassion i was able to have compassion for them i feel like okay you know okay okay i don't agree with them i wouldn't say such things but they are coming from this place so okay fine <laughs> wow that's very mature, you know, that's very mature, like, um, wow, wow. Thank what you. were you, what were you saying? No, I said thank you. And you know, if it wasn't for you, Rocky, putting out your messages, 
I wouldn't have had uh, contact with Devon, the Black Airbender, oh, because okay. I was introduced to him through your interview with him. I see. So by it's... looking at your YouTube videos, it suggested me a random video of him and, and you. You y'all had an interview together, and that's where I found him. Oh, okay, yeah. awesome. Okay, yeah, yeah. He reached out to me, and then you know he d did an interview, and yeah, nice, nice, nice guy. Yeah. 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 So it's like, the more that we put out these things, the more that we find each other, the more that we connect, the more that we, you know, realize that there have been people living this way all along that we never even knew about, we were never aware of. Right, yeah. right, right. I'm so happy that uh, you connect with Devon because of the interview. That's great. You never know who you're touching, right? Right. And how, yeah. what, what things are happening, yeah. You just do your best and you just keep putting it out there and, and, and everything will happen. Yeah. Absolutely. We have... Real quick, uh, Simon Freeman said, I'm so glad I booked the retreat, Rocky. Thank you so much for reaching out to me. Can't wait to see you in Costa Rica. So he's oh, coming. Then, oh, oh my God, excited. Okay. <laughs> so looking forward to it, Simon. Great. Yeah. 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 Awesome. <laughs> so lastly, lastly, Rocky, you know, what would be a message you would give for somebody if there was one thing that you could say to somebody that is inspired by you, they see what you're doing, and they, they think that this journey might be for them, they might have this inner calling, but they're, they're kind of unsure, a little bit uncertain of, as to how to begin, like how to start out, what would be a piece of advice you would give for them? Well, I would say that um, they can do an initiation, mm -hmm. you know, maybe they can do it an online one or they can do um, you know come in uh, like a into a retreat and do an initiation because that kind of just jump starts you into this path um, you know um, but if say for example if you be if you're interested in this path but say you're not uh, if your diet is really heavy then I would say lighten up on your diet before you go into initiation clean your body up before you go into initiation because initiation is really hard on your body you first would need to clean your body up. So, so take some time, take a few months, whatever. Maybe you can go raw vegan, maybe go vegan, maybe do some detoxing of the body. As your body detoxes, do 24 hour dry fast. As your body starts detoxing, then going into the initiation would be a lot easier because the three and a half day dry does take, I mean, there's heavy detoxing going on when you do that. So um, I would say that if you're interested, start lightening up start detoxing, start getting healthier, and then you go to the initiation, and then it'll be clear. I've seen people struggle through the initiation because their bodies have so much toxic stuff in it, right? So the less toxic you are, the easier the initiation is. So. Wow, that's really important to know because, you know, I'm reminded, I've had people come to me for different consultations and coaching, and, you know, they've asked me questions like, Jerome, you know, I've I've been fasting for a week or I've been fasting for two weeks and I'm still addicted to food. I still have all these cravings. I still have all these emotions. Like, how do I break this? How do I do this? And, you know, you, you told me some, some really important things that helped me on my journey. What, what do you feel like people really underestimate about how long it takes to transition? Well, I think, so, yeah. I think what it is, is first of all, to lighten up, then to go, do an initiation, like a three and a half day initiation, right? A pranic initiation. But that's easy compared to actual real life. Mm. You see, like this is the pre initiation is easy, then, then the initiation is like, okay. But the post initiation is where it's like, oh my God, because you're hit into this real world and you gotta need to deal with it, need to deal with the food and the aromas of the food and all that kind of stuff. So, so yeah, I think people kind of, I think they want it to happen overnight. Like, mm -hmm. you cannot become Olympic swimmer overnight. You have to be gentle. You have to maybe, you know, go for practice and, you know, keep doing it slowly and slowly and slowly. And then you can do that. So for some people, maybe it's overnight. I don't know. But that has not been my experience at overnight. Like, you know. Not, not mine. <laughs> so I think it's, it's, it's keep, 
keep trying, keep trying, keep doing it, keep doing it. Not trying, but keep doing it and mm -hmm. keep doing it. And then you get, and then your body changes. Once your body changes, it's no longer craving the old stuff it craved because your, your frequency has changed. You're no longer attracted to that. So keep going, keep going. As you keep going on your path, you keep changing. And you don't realize that you're changing, but what you're attracted to and what you resonate with no longer is the same as, as what you used to. And then you know you're changing, you keep changing, it keeps changing. And then before you know it, so many synchronicities start happening to you because then you're on your path. Mm -hmm. And then, then life becomes magical. Mm -hmm. It's like the changes are really small at first, Absolutely. but you're, at a certain point, it feels like you start getting that compound interest. Right. Kind of like, a, like a stock going up or something, you know? Yeah. Absolutely, Jerome. That's a good point to make. It's like you take one step forward and sometimes you may take two steps back, but mm -hmm. that doesn't mean that you're not going forward. I mean, you may have taken two steps back, but you're still on that path, right? You're mm -hmm. still there. You're still walking. So just yeah. keep going. The keep slow, going. Keep going. Slow and steady. You may think it's two steps back, but maybe it's not two steps mm -hmm. back, right? In your mind, you may think it's two steps back, but maybe right. that's what you do to go three steps forward, right? Mm hmm. That's even that's even a saying in Taoism in the Tao Te Ching, this wonderful book I read. It says, "The way forward seems to go back." You know, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's that's like a... <laughs> the the straight path seems crooked. You know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So yeah. what you what you described earlier about one of the hardest parts and one of the hardest aspects, and this was for me as well, was what I think Ray Mayor talks about. He calls it integration. Mm -hmm. You know, that integration period of when you go back into society after the initiation, you forget that, okay, you might have changed on some level, you know, maybe those hunger pangs aren't feeling, you know, you don't have those same feelings as you did before, or you're seeing things in a new way. Maybe you're all the way on liquids but the rest of the world might not be living like that. Right. And then you get around your friends, you get around your family, they're not living like that. And then you see all those billboards, all those advertisements, all those restaurants, everyone is still operating under the same operating system, but your computer, your, your software has been updated yeah. and you're like, oh gosh, like, yeah. what do I do? So you can you know? either then continue or you can say, you know what, this is not for me. I'm going to go back to doing what I'm doing. You know, mm -hmm. like I, I, I want my friends. I want, I want my old life back, you know? So, so it, it, it's an, it, it's an individual journey, you know, maybe, it, you know, it's, it, there's no judgment. I mean, it, you do whatever, whatever, whatever is your highest joy. I mean, this is not a path for everybody. I say that very clearly. It's not a path for everybody, but, but if you are interested, then, then <laughs> clean up your body do an initiation and then go for it and see what happens wow rocky thank you so much for following your highest joy thank you for just you know just following your bliss speaking your truth raising your voice shining and letting people know the possibilities of i feel like our limitless human potential you know here on this planet at this time what you're doing is just tremendous and i really commend you for doing it thank you so much for coming on here and speaking to us today oh it's your own thank yeah. you so much. thank you i am honored thank you so much for having me and uh thank you and jerome i have to say the same for you you're such an inspiration to so many people and you you're you're constantly putting yourself out there so right back at you this thank is the time you know this is the time to do it so if you any any last things that you would like to let people know either about the retreat or ways that they could reach out to you or any services that you might provide anywhere they can they can find you uh yeah, yeah. You let everyone know? i'm known as a breatharian yogini so i have a website now finally <laughs> it's called breatharian .com, so you can go there and the retreats are all also over there uh if you want to go directly to the retreat page it's uh spiritualheights.com but you can go to brother and yogini it'll take you to the retreats page anyways and and yeah so february 12th through the 19th we're going to have a transformational uh breatharian retreat and that's going to be uh in costa rica uh no vaccines required no rt-pcr test required to get into costa rica so it's easy to get there we have this beautiful beautiful villa 
beautiful villa that we have uh, that we have there that we rented and um, so yeah we are I mean, it's 50% off so it's a great deal so check it out and if you find a calling if you feel that this is something you want to try out then come for nice warm weather in Costa Rica and get away from the cold here that's happening in, in, in the US and come join us we have so many beautiful people that are coming that have already signed up oh my god such beautiful people um, so I'm so looking forward to it and and I hope that you know if, if you find a calling that you also will join us and we'd love to have you so thank you so much for having me awesome much love thank you everyone thank you. for joining even thank if you're you. watching this on the replay we appreciate you much yes. love and yeah just keep going enjoy the journey don't be so hard on yourself be kind to yourself love yourself and yeah we will keep shining we will keep going yeah. yes yes as the world changes we're also going to be changing Yes. Thank you so much, everyone. Right. Take care. Bye. 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 Bye.